so long we've been here we've been trying to break your life hi and welcome to the springboard hangout the springboard hangout is your farm filled but highly educative program that we deal with issues that kind of affect all of us and we say how do we solve it my name is comfort okrain we have begun a six series part looking at entrepreneurship that we are calling entrepreneurship 101 the first one we looked at um, strapping your boots and we said well if you want to be an entrepreneur what should you consider as a budding entrepreneur following that we went to what we will call ideation what kind of things should you discover how do you discover your niche how do you ensure that your business actually has a market and most importantly how do you make sure that the people that you are serving you are giving them value because as an entrepreneur you must always give your clients value with that they will keep coming back yeah. to you every single day so after that today today series three we are looking at what everybody thinks about money. money. When we say money, I mean money, 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 say money. Okay, so we're looking at money today or funding or financing your business. And don't think that it's just for entrepreneurs because looking at how you handle your funds would help you in every way. So this is not just for entrepreneurs, even though we are talking about entrepreneurship. It's for everybody who would like, who would like to find new ways or ways in which to handle his or her money to ensure that he or she becomes financially independent. But we're talking about financing this time with a particular focus on entrepreneurs. Does it sound exciting? I hope so. Because it is going to be exciting. Because of that, we searched. And you know, I, the springboard for this is me. I can tell you that. We searched and searched and searched. And then we found that, okay, Franklin has been doing phenomenally so far. So we are bringing Franklin back up. <laughs> so Franklin, also Kakari, the Business De Development Director of National Entrepreneurship and in, in, in mm. Innovation uh, program. program, is back on uh, uh, what we call uh, NIP. NEIP, sorry. Yeah. But most importantly, I have some special ladies. <laughs> <laughs> And she is the one who's going to bring the jewel in our crown for today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is jewel Nana Thompson. She is the um, she 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 is the, the the director as well as the manager of the Shesi Innovation Program. And you know how, I mean, sometimes they, they I don't like to say, but Ashesi is really churning out some really, yeah, yeah. really fascinating entrepreneurs. So somebody who has been training and has been bringing out those people, we have to find what is the secret there. Yeah. So if she's on board tonight. And therefore, today is a fully, <laughs> fully loaded program for us. Most importantly, you know you are the focus. Yeah. And therefore, as we go on for a short break, I would like you to tell us, number one, where you're joining us from, and then invite your friends and family to join you as well because it's going to be like no other springboard hangout program. It's a privilege coming away tonight, and we'll be right back after this break. Can have it. Eradicaso, 
Kasa, that would be a baggage. Every other voice, so so yeah, yeah. It's an opinion, they can have it. Erade Kaso, Kasa, that would be a I need a car in 15 minutes. Hi, I'm Jake, Jake Morris, and I travel globally. But when I'm in Ghana, Yorks Rent a Car is my reliable choice for safety and comfort on the road. Yorks Rent a Car provides comprehensive logistic services to mainly blue chip companies as well as individual clients. At a time we needed a car rental service, and Yorks fitted in very well to our standards. Their services is top notch. Drivers are on time. It was beautiful to see them behind the wheels and any time they pick up a guest the guests were very very happy already yes excellent yorks rent a car provides services and expertise that include meet and greet services at the airport car rental driver personal outsourcing and vehicle detailing Go, what, what's the problem is yo i told you yorks rent a car delivers world-class service to its customers having their higher safety and comfort in mind so watch you Go over to open for him. Yorks Rent a Car runs 24 7 operations where customers can make car reservations and inquiries of our services online and also call our. Hi, welcome back. Franklin is a T1000 uh, entrepreneur and she's a, he's also a consultant and a business coach advisor. As I said, Director of Business Development at um, um, National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. Um, we have Jewel. Jewel is the incubator, operations lead and incubator lead as I shall see. They, they have the incubator next new entrepreneurs exchange. And please, the exchange is X, not EX. <laughs> exchange for transformation. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. And um, has the the uh, the cv if you see the cv i have here challenge be like from here to burkina faso so we are stopping it right here so she the most important thing is that she she is the operations lead and incubator manager for the next um, program at Ashesin university therefore we are going straight into it so Ju, um jewel i see what 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 does next really help the students do. Okay, excellent. So next eye to eye, um, new entrepreneurs exchange for transformation idea to impact is a collaboration between Ashesi University and MIT D Lab, as well as it being funded and supported by USAID. And so wow. the idea behind this was that we were looking at an opportunity to understand how do we actually support student entrepreneurs? Because at the university, we are keen on saying we are developing these ethical entrepreneurs, but then what happens when they're done with university? And that's what the project sought to understand. And so in doing that, we said we have to find a way to kind of close the gap mm -hmm. where instead of saying those that you're going out and going straight into industry, here's an opportunity for you to start your own business. And so that's essentially what it represents for the students is starting your business or jumpstarting it right after university so what has what has what has been the the output you know because i'm sure you've mm -hmm. graduated some students from from there yeah so what has been the 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 the, the results the from results that results have been amazing so we take them cohort by cohort each year and so with our first year first graduating group we have those that have gone on um, we have someone like a david or gospel right so with his particular uh, firm which is called beautiful story studio 
Israel. He's trying to capture the narrative or change the narrative of Africa. And he's doing that. Oh, he's my sweetheart now. You see? It's beautiful. <laughs> doing that through film and industry. And he's also been chosen or he actually helped to direct even Beyonce's picture when he came, she came here to shoot for her film. You know, Whoa. Film. So you have people like that who are just trying to find a way of making African products, businesses, and services relevant from a global perspective. So mm -hmm. you've seen that output with a lot of our young entrepreneurs, whether they're in tech, whether they're in the fashion space, whether they're in entertainment, wherever it may be, and that's what we've been helping to generate. I love that. <laughs> I just, that, that um, 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 David, you said? Yes. David, is, is David, David, uh, David, I don't know if you're watching, <laughs> uh, but please watch. And then one of these days you come and tell us more about your story because I simply love that. Because one of the things that's my pet peeve mm. is to see some picture where it depicts any parts of Africa so yes. poor and then they write a very poor narrative mm -hmm. as well. And, yeah. and so I love David and I will definitely feature David in on the Hangouts one of the days. I don't know when, but when I do, we'll give you a shout out. Please do. Yeah. I'll have him come for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, right. So, so um, 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 when we talk about um, we talk about funding, mm -hmm. um, in a sense, on a scale of one to ten, how important? And this is coming to you, okay. um, Franklin. Yeah. How important is the level of financial awareness amongst entrepreneurship? Anytime you send uh, a questionnaire around mm -hmm. to young people. Mm -hmm. Uh, to take the uh, key issues or challenges they are facing in their business. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, you can get 9 over 10 and the 9 representing financing. Okay. okay. Most people see financing as key, topmost priority for them in their business. Okay. So entrepreneurs, cash is king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cash <laughs> is king. <laughs> but what, what about... But I'm more in, I'm interested in their financial awareness and how they handle their money. So knowing that cash is king is one thing. Yeah. But knowing how to handle the funds when they come when it comes into the business is another issue. Yeah. So how is that level of financial awareness where one is the lowest and ten is the highest? Because you can give the person let's say even 100 billion, right. but if the person doesn't know how to handle his or her finances, yeah. the it's, person is yeah. going to just, you know, whittle it With away. Things. Yes. So do you want to take that, um, Joel? Yeah, I can add on to what Franklin yeah. was yeah. saying. Yeah. It's just that when you look at it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say a lot of uh, our entrepreneurs are at about a 4. And that's because every day they're used to using money, handling yeah. money. Yeah. You know, we purchase things, we know that we use it for utility, but we don't understand, okay, savings, investment, how I can turn this into an actual profit. All of that is gone or lost to us. Um, so we just know how to use it for uh, the next day. So mm -hmm. here's my money for today. I'm going to use it to get by for the next day and the next day and the next day, and then everything else is lost. So when you don't have that management component inside, um, you don't know how to grow your capital or even sustain it long term. What do you think? That, that is really true. Mm. Most people, you can give them funding today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the next one year, you'll find them more depressed in their businesses. Yes. Because people do not know how to really, really manage funding no. okay. and manage their books. Okay. And the reason why most young people or most early stage businesses and most Ghanaian businesses are not growing is the fact that we don't manage our books and our financing very well. Okay. So you bring an investor and you tell the person, can you show me, you've been working for the past three years, can you show me your record? You so, me the you know, and people, they sit in the marketplace, even for young people, mm -hmm. they receive Momo mm -hmm. on their, for payments, for goods, and it's on their phone. They don't take records where the money came from, they keep spending it. And by the time you realize you are eating your capital away, mm -hmm. and that is very key for us to, for people to understand that proper management of your fund is also a source of capital. That's true. So what, you, what, what, what I hear from both of you is that honestly, being finan not, just, not just knowing that you need money, but how to manage the money mm -hmm. when it comes into the business is extremely key very. for all entrepreneurs, whether you're a burden or whether you are, you've been in the business for, for a long time. So I, I, I wanted to ask this question because I wanted to set a grounding for us to continue this com the, um, conversation. Okay. So then it's important and we need to understand how to manage our finances, right? 
So let's go on to the next point. Um, or something, something that somebody said, and I think it will buttress this point. And um, um, we had a program called the Call Call Program, where we it's a COVID nineteen recovery and um, resilience program, where we at, we attempted to reach young people about the um, the possibilities mm -hmm. that COVID that is not the end of life, right. but COVID is there. We will can survive it and we can thrive afterwards if we put certain things in place. And as part of that, we had conferences. One of the core conferences, we had Dr. Seda, who said, interestingly, that most businesses, unfortunately, are set up to fail from day one because they do not have any sustainable financial plan in place. And he said it was regrettable because some of the ideas are great ideas, yeah. but because of the lack of financial structures and financial thing, um, 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 well-being or know-how, it doesn't come out that way. So here today, what I, I, I would like to say, do you agree with it? And if you do, can we first start drilling down one, two, three things that would okay. help um, organizations put themselves in a position themselves to succeed mm -hmm. instead of being one that will fail in the future. Sure, okay. can you can you start off? Sure, I can and start off with just from the I guess ground level. Yes. First and foremost, I think what happens is that it's a mentality thing. People are afraid of numbers. I personally don't don't like it myself, <laughs> right? Well look you look at the big numbers, when you're doing the calculations, it becomes too much. And then you get intimidated by it and then you forget about it. You say, I don't need it. You know, I think I'm getting hundred cities here, two hundred cities here, it's fine. But the reality is that if you look starting at ground zero, you need to have a budget. Okay. At so number one is a budget. A budget. Yeah. Plain and simple. Even when you're starting up, people forget that. What exactly are those startup costs? What is that going to look like later as you grow within the business? Because your startup costs are going to look different from your general day-to-day -day operational costs. And if you don't know how to differentiate that, then of course you're going to burn out of your cash rather quickly. So starting off with a budget is very critical. So thinking through how much are things going to cost you um, when it comes to the equipment that you need, when you're thinking about the people that you may have to hire, when you're starting to think about, okay, what are the inventory if you are doing something that's a potential product that you need to have in place um, to help you, even if let's say you're producing this product, raw materials, how much does all of that cost you to start? And this in general, if you have a small production house, how much is that going to cost you? Have that ready to go. And then the things that are more kind of static for you, right? So let's say just your one-time cost or fixed cost, have that also in place. So you'll have those two kind of uh, costs that you're thinking of, your variable and fixed costs that are gonna be in your potential budget. And of course, starting to think of the income that you potentially may begin to generate after that first sale. And then what does 10 sales look like? What do 20 sales look like over time in that beginning? And how do you prepare that budget? So when you start off from there, that's at least preparing you for success. And this is going to be the thing that can at least begin to feed into your other financial statements. So just starting with the budget. I'll bounce it off to you. Well, so once the budget is done, mm -hmm. now you ask yourself, I've listed all these things. Mm -hmm. Can I fund it? Okay. If I can't fund it, where do I start from? Exactly. So now... Okay, I've seen that. Look, I would need like a hundred thousand. Oh, I beg you, I beg you. I'm not, <laughs> let's, I'm, let's, I'm, let's calm down. No, you see, I'm giving the bigger picture. I okay. want to, I'll be drilling it down. Okay, okay, okay. But to be able to hire and get office space, get all these things. But I have just 5,000 cities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you can see that the budget is that it gives you a good picture. Mm -hmm. But now here, the level of finance you have begin to set you up to be able to know exactly where to start from. Mm -hmm. So I have very little money. Mm -hmm. So then what do I do? I have to start bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. It means that it will come from me. So they begin, when you say bootstrapping, uh, using your own savings that you've done over time to start from where you are. And start small. Because the budgeting will help you to know that, look, I don't have the money to acquire all the things that I've been able to. That's why the budgeting is very important. It gives you an overview of your spending line. And now you come down, okay, so I don't have all the money. At the initial stage, I have to bootstrap. So I tell people that for the first one year of your business, if you are really going to go into it, bootstrap on your own, your mm -hmm. own savings. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have other partners in them, they come in also with your co-founders to also contribute to be part. And then you can begin to finance what you can. Don't bite too much at that early stage. Mm -hmm. But it will be too much in your mouth to chew. 
Yes, it will. So at that early stage, you look at your budget, and that's what we call lean startup. And you start small according to uh, the funding that you have at that early stage. As you grow, and you know, she talks about your first sales, selling 20, selling 30. As you begin to come in, you plow back a little by little, little by little. That is why the professor said that, uh, Mr. Sedo said that, uh, most of us, we start the business right from the onset, we are preparing to fail. Because we don't put in the necessary requirement and the measures. Some people want to think that, oh, let me wait when I grow a bit bigger, then I can start keeping my books. We are only no. planning to fail. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So just begin from there with the budget, then you look at how to be able to fund the budget small by small. So for the first two years of your business, mm -hmm. use the bootstrapping, your own savings, then some co-founders, uh, family and friends come in. Yes. This should be the first two years of your business. Ah, but, bros, what you are telling me is, it seems as if you are trying to tell me that um, I can't get big, big money immediately I start my business. <laughs> and what if I don't have any fund? What if I don't have any savings? How, how, do I, how do I fund my business? So then that's an important way to begin to look at that, right? So you have to, as an entrepreneur, have a vision in mind of where you're trying to go with your business. So even if, let's say, and um, this doesn't mean that you're not an entrepreneur, but let's say then you take on another job, mm -hmm. right? And this potential job that you're taking on, it can be related to your business, it cannot be, but you know that this is something that you're doing partially to help you begin to fund this potential business. Okay. Yeah. So now you take that particular salary or income that you're making and you say okay. to yourself, I'm taking about 20% of this funding, and again, I'm making up arbitrary percentages yes, here. Yes. So you're taking about 20% of your income. Maybe that will go to savings. Yeah. Maybe the other 30% is going to go to your day-to-day -day life, paying for little expenses here to there. And then you're saying, all right, the big 50% is going to go right into this business that I'm starting so that I can start saving for myself. Mm -hmm. And then you just break it down like that. And you set milestones. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, right? So you have your mm -hmm. goals and you have milestones. So you may have an overarching goal for the year and saying to yourself, by the end of this year, I want to buy my first um, piece of equipment, which means that I will set milestones for each month, that now I'm going to save this much, put it towards the savings, put it towards my business, etc. Then month two, have you made this much? Month three, have you made this much? And then slowly but surely, you're doing all of this, but I think more than likely what you may have talked about, Franklin, too, is that even with your business, you're still in your market. So you're still yeah. testing, you're still talking to people, maybe not at a large scale, but it's not something that's like a big, big startup, but you're starting small. So you're saving, still testing, still in the market. And then now what you're seeing as well is that you're starting to see some growth. And even if you don't have the friends, the family, you've started a small pot to help you to just kind of get it going. And so that's, that's kind of where you can look at it as well. Do you know anybody who has done that? Personally, mm -hmm. when I, I, I started, you know, I was telling you the story of how I used my bag around my neck moving to KJTR. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you start with the low hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. And let me tell the corporate guys, those who are full time working mm -hmm. and want to venture. Look, she talked about your salary that is coming. Sometimes, if you have a very good salary, you can leverage on your salary also to take a facility to be able to inject into your business. Mm -hmm. Now, the pressure is not on the business. The pressure is on the salary. Mm -hmm. The pressure is on the salary, which is coming. So uh, they did that to you on a monthly basis from your salary. And you are able to use the money, that the low facility you have taken to be able to finance the business idea. Now, you don't use the business to... Um, finance uh, to take a loan to finance the business but rather from your salary and as time goes on this is important because you need to be able to ensure that you are not putting cost to yourself that will kill the business mm -hmm. that's why we tell you that begin use part of the savings that you make from over time as i was doing i, I was making some money from there and i, I inject part of the money into my uh, heavy uh, the heavily capital intensive businesses. Uh, yeah. So you put it in gradually, you go, sometimes you leverage on supply credit and be able to put in, integrity comes in, yeah. you pay back, people trust you and begin to build from there. 
And as you move along, because you have timelines, we told ourselves that for the first two years, we are not taking any bank facility. Okay. When our bankers saw that some monies were coming into the account, quickly they come, oh, we can give you something, but no. Certain loans will kill the business at certain stage if you have, you have not planned the business well. Yeah. So we structure that until we are five years old and we have the bones to be able to you take the, what? the bones. <laughs> now we are babies drinking milk. <laughs> okay, but when we can chew bones, then we know that we are uh, in good place to be able to take the facility. Mm -hmm. okay. But for the beginning, rely on the little you have, rely on friends and family, rely on where you can. And apart from that, there are also free money in the system, which are grants, okay. which are scattered all over Africa, right. all over Ghana. So these are areas also to look up to at the early stages of your business. Okay, how does one position his or her business to attract such funds and grants sure, sure, sure. because yeah. i mean it's, it's really a yeah. source of funding yeah. so because we've looked at family and friends we've looked at uh, uh, yourself yeah. but yourself first yes yeah, sir first and definitely please if you're going to do your business you have to you have to invest in your business of because course. if you don't believe in your idea why do you expect someone else to believe in your idea and invest in your idea so please mm -hmm. you yourself your funds, where are you getting your funds from? I mean, your personal funds. And as Jewel said so, so beautifully, if, if you, you, you don't have now plan, you don't have to start tomorrow. No. Take your time so that you can put yourself in a place to succeed in your own business. Right. Okay, so now we are looking at um, how one positions an organization to make it attractive for funding. Yes, so when it comes to funding, and we're talking about this, from the funder's perspective, then they're looking at a way to mitigate risk. Mm -hmm. How does your business... What does mitigate risk mean? All right, let's put it up there. So <laughs> mitigation yeah. of risk, right? So how can you let the funder know that essentially you have done all of these things to where their business or their investment in you is going to give them a return and it's not investing into something that is going to essentially disappear, die, disappear <laughs> blow up, whatever, transition out of something else. So when you're doing every activity that you do shows that you've mitigated this risk. Have you tested the market? Do people actually want to buy this thing? Are people buying this? That's traction. Okay, now you're giving me evidence that if I give you this money, there are people there that are actually going to buy this. Then on the other end, they're looking at your structure. So can you handle this money that I'm about to yeah. give you, mm. right? Because now they want to know that you have books in place for this, meaning that you have some sort of You'll system, find, yeah. you know, that mm -hmm. is showing in when money comes in, do you know where it's going, how it's being split or worked across your books in that sense? So when you're talking about payments, you know, uh, or excuse me, when you're bringing in income and you're saying to yourself, we pay this person, we pay that, but then that comes back into our business this way, you're able to show this kind of beautiful financial story to whomever your funder may be because they can trust that your systems actually work. And that comes from your accounting practices, right? Are you being transparent with where your money is going and how you're using your money? And that's gonna be critical to them to be able to see that. So I'm gonna pass it over to Franklin as well to share some other thoughts too. Together we raised about $100,000 grants mm -hmm. in Ghana. And we started looking up. At that time, we were struggling to be able to raise enough money to buy machines and all that. Oh, you mean your business? Yes, my okay, business. Okay, okay, tell us so more. I'm interested. We, we, in we, we were looking out for the opportunities that were in the system. So we saw the TEF program, the Tony Elmelu program, and the requirements. So if you want to position your business to attract these grants, mm -hmm. the things that you all talked about, you need to be able to have systems in place, even at the early stage of your business. Look, if it's one notebook you have, keep records. Mm -hmm. Because this funding, this grants company, because they're giving grant, they want to be sure that the money they're giving you is not going into buying a new mobile phone for yourself, exactly. a new dress for yourself, a new <laughs> shoe for yourself. They want to be sure What's that... What's a new car? Because I'm needing the car to do my business rounds. You have to <laughs> allocate that correctly. Yes. You have to write it off the <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember uh, we, we, we gave funding to one business in Tamale. And we went on uh, after field visit. Field visit. We got there. The guy's business was slow. And we were told that, oh, as soon as he got the money, he married the second wife. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and this is how people begin. To, and I can tell you, most Ghanaian business, even the big ones, mm -hmm. they will go for a loan of $1 million. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, 60% will go into personal spending. Then they will bring little to the business. Yes. 
They do this a lot. And it's, it's a fact. They go for a huge venture capital fund, a huge loan. Half of the money will go into their own personal fund. So you need to be able to, discipline is key in be able to build in a strong financial back business. Mm. You need to discipline yourself. Yeah. It took us nine years in our business before we bought our first car. Okay. So when you build, you discipline yourself well, from I, the beginning. I, uh, go on, go on. Yeah. You You're telling, uh, telling us how you got to yeah, so various funding. We applied for the uh, TEF program. Mm -hmm. We won uh, $10,000. Mm -hmm. Then uh, other programs came. We had uh, uh, the uh, Denmark Business Cup. We had, the, uh, at that time, the Youth Enterprise Program. Total Startup of the Year. Engine Program. These are all locally here. And we apply. We go through the process. And the process ensures that there is uh, systems in your business. I want to add something to that. You said something interesting. So when sometimes you're going after grants, there's mm -hmm. something that you don't even expect would impact you, yeah. and that's your team. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a lot of them that will look at you and say, oh, this is a great idea, you've done so well, and then they look at the team and it's just me and you on the yeah. <laughs> And they're yes. like, no. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you no because they don't believe that you have the capacity to, to actually manage. grow and manage this business. They'll tell you no right then and there. So if your team, is, you haven't picked them strategically, that can also impact you in the way that funders look at you potentially or your structures as well. What that okay, like. so I, I think I'm more interested. So uh, I'm, I'm interested in, so what other criteria do potential funders look at mm -hmm. for, 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 for yeah. funding? So when you're looking, if we want to get more specific, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about some of the financial statements, they want to look at maybe if we're getting technical, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're keeping your accounting as you should, they're going to be looking at your profit and loss statements, income profit statements, okay. as well as your balance sheets. All of this is going to give a history about your business, mm -hmm. yeah? So it's going to tell you what your business did and then what your business has the potential to do financially because you're going to have those predictions in there as well that this is what we're projecting to make in the future. But then let's say in the past your business took a dip, maybe because of COVID. Yeah. They're going to want to know why were you now making only 200 cities when before you were making almost 100,000 cities. That's a big jump, but why is this happening? And if you can tell them, well, financially, we had to cut this off, this off, pay for this, move this, shift this here, and this is what ended up being our profit, then yes, you know, to them, if you're able to tell that through your numbers, they can trust again that, again, you're going to mitigate that risk for them. So they're going to be looking at those particular statements as well, again, to understand the history and the potential future for your business. So once you have that aligned, um, then the next thing, like I said, comes down to your team yeah. who's managing this. Who has the what's their history mm -hmm. do they actually understand this market yeah most times they might not know what they're doing you are planting or you have a chicken farm and you have somebody who's only like raised cashews or something yeah. of that sort and here's someone managing it they, <laughs> they can't they can't take they, you too yeah, serious yeah. you know you want to add to that no well? they, they are very particular and yeah. uh, before you go into such programs you have to make sure that you are prepared mm -hmm. otherwise you stand on the stage and uh, you'll be disgraced because they ask you questions and it seems you don't even understand your own business so understand what you are doing, understand the processes involved. And apart from the teams, they also look at your impact. Okay. Are you impacting the community? Yeah. How many people are you employing? Yeah. Is it just uh, father and son, brother and uh, sister, husband and wife thing? Oh, how many people are in the teams? That's what she's talking about. Yeah. And they, they come around to look at how all these things are being done. Then how do you, even now, they go to the extent of your impact on the environment. Okay. Okay, yeah, because of sustainability yes. and so on and so forth. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. look at all that to be able to ensure that, look, we can put money into this guy's or this team's business. And I can tell you, most people do not only invest in the business idea. They invest in the people behind the idea. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They invest in the Why people. Why do they invest in the people behind the idea? No matter how great the idea is, mm -hmm. if the person is not good, what do you mean by good? Attitude-wise. Attitude? Yes. And then? And also in terms of the person's uh, resilience to be able to stand the test of time. Some people at a small um, issue, they give up. And somebody has put in, even though it's a grant, they've put in like, let's say, even 20,000 cities grant in your business. You face some small challenges, you let the business go. So they look at the person behind the business. How tough is that person? How tough are you? Yes. Okay. So that, these things are very key and okay. be able to help you to be able to shape your business up at early stages. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, how tough are you? And honestly, I mean, the, the opportunity to get the funding that you need 
does exist here in Ghana. It does. And um, I want to say that for people who are watching this particular program, I'm sure you are aware that NEIP would be giving a 10,000 CD grant at the end of this entrepreneurship program. So I want to tell you that if you think there, there is not in the, in the system, it does exist. Yeah. And therefore, all you have to do is send your business idea, what are you doing, what do you hope to impact, and do a short video maximum two minutes and if your video is good your idea is good we'll go beyond that of course to find more about you and you may be the lucky winner of 10,000 cities right here on the springboard hangout which would be my privilege my joy my, the greatest joy to hand it over to you <laughs> so do put yourself in the game don't throw your heart out yet and most importantly tell a friend because it is important that we can grow the next business here in GH with the funding that is available. We are going on a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be So it's great seeing you today on the Springboard Hangout. We have an opportunity for you to make some money and put into your business. If you want to win this opportunity, just do one minute video of your business idea or a business that you have and tell us how the business is, how the business is solving a particular problem and how you are making money or you are going to make money from that business idea. Send it to our WhatsApp line 024. Nine 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 five five five. If you have any information or you want to make more inquiries about how to make the short video, you can call the same line and they will help you. Until October last year, digital artist Mike Winkleman, known as Beeple, hadn't sold his art for more than a hundred dollars. So how on earth did he manage to sell a piece for sixty-nine million dollars? Just five months later, one possible answer is NFTs. Beeple's piece was auctioned as a non-fungible token or NFT, which uses blockchain to verify and trade ownership of digital assets like art. NFTs have exploded recently. By making virtual art collectible, they've empowered digital artists to get paid more for their work. But NFTs can't fully explain Beeple's success. So what can? Today, our game changer is consistency. Since 2007, Beeple has created digital art every single day. He called the series Every Days. In fact, the piece that was auctioned was actually a collage of the first 5,000 Every Days. And with each Every Day, Beeple developed his skills in a unique, surreal art style. He slowly built a community around his work with over 2 million people online championing his art. So even though Beeple's work blew up in five months, his so-called overnight success was actually 13 years in the making. Let's wrap up with three consistency tips from Beeple. Tip one, creativity comes from repetition. Tip two, consistency builds community. And tip three, preparation breeds opportunity. John Maxwell put it best. Small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements. One question for the week, what are you going to be consistent with? This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okran. Have a phenomenal week. Exactly. The game changer was consistently a consistency. And um, what do you make of the ginger, game changer today? You know, consistency is the key. Said consistency creates a community. Yeah. Whatever you put your hands towards, mm -hmm. if you are consistent over a time, you become an expert. Mm. And most people easily give up on things. Mm -hmm. They have a brilliant idea. They start off within a year. They just give up. Mm -hmm. But when you are consistent with it, for a long time, it began to yield results. When I was 
I started, I wanted to become a chartered accountant, to mm. work with KPMG or Ernst & Young. <laughs> and when I discovered myself and I took up this thing of entrepreneurship and roaming around here, helping people, we were like, why are you wasting your time? But within over 15 years, mm. I've had the privilege to be in universities in Pretoria, helping universities to shape up entrepreneurship incubation. Mm. And people see you flying all over across uh, Africa and Europe. And I said, it's not an overnight success. It has taken something consistency built over time. And that is how it works. So young entrepreneurs come and don't just give up. Be consistent with what you are doing. You know, this person was, when he was doing the artwork, he didn't know, that within some 13 years, people think that, oh, what, where is, what's the magic? So when you make the money, people think that you are going for a secret It's not a secret <laughs> It's being consistent. It's being, 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 being um, consistent. So if we bring this consistency into our financial management as entrepreneurs, how does that play out? It's the most powerful thing because when you're consistent, then you're mindful of the details and the little things that you have to do within okay. your business, right? Okay. And the okay. reason why I say that is because I used to have this client, I had this client, I was working with this NGO, mm -hmm. and the client that I had, she came to me because um, essentially she started off as a very successful entrepreneur in a sense. She was self-funded, um, she started investing in properties. And then we all know that in about 2008, we mm -hmm. had the big market crash. Mm -hmm. So essentially all of her properties went kaput and she lost a lot of funding um, to the point where she ended up having as an adult, almost 40 years old, moving back with family mm. um, in order to sustain. She lost everything that she had. It impacted what we have in the United States. It's like her credit score came to the very bottom of the bottom and she could not even afford to actually go back and um, purchase a new home. So mm. she came to our particular program looking for support. And so this woman remained consistent in her mm -hmm. money and in her finances. So we worked together to come up with a financial plan to mm -hmm. support her in paying back any debts that she owed because of course she had accumulated some. Slowly but surely she kept paying them off, coming to the plan, and then she started to develop her own business plan as well. Okay. To say, okay, this is what I want to do again and this is how I'm going to do it. Okay. And by end of the year, almost two years in, she was at the point because she had remained consistent, yeah. right, saving, doing what she needed to do, that she was now able to come back to us and get the funding that she needed to actually go back and reinvest in another investment property. And that took all of about a year and a half for her to do that actual turnaround. Wow. And that was powerful to see just her testimony, even though she was at this level, you know, having had all the money and had to and essentially be humbled down mm -hmm. to a point where, you know, she was staying again with family and friends. Um, but she essentially said, I'm going to do this. And she stayed focused and didn't care what anyone else said and Thought. saved everything yeah. that she did and moved forward and made it happen for herself. Fantastic. That's a really, really fantastic yeah. um, way, I mean, to, to look at consistency in financial management. Okay, so we've been consistent in managing our finances. We have also looked at ways that uh, we can ensure that the team that we have around us um, understand where we are going and they are hopefully turning off the lights <laughs> when they need to turn it off and so on and so forth. Um, one of the things that, I mean, that's you, I, I think I, 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 I kind of picked up from this particular, uh, um, this thing that you, was a concept of safety nets. Mm -hmm. How can businesses build financial safety nets, um, frankly? It's very important. Uh, uh, I tell entrepreneurs that uh, the most uh, secured place in the world, we call it maximum security. <laughs> and maximum security is in the prisons. <laughs> okay. For we entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. the safety net is difficult. But what I tell people is that build a reliable business that you can put your trust in to build for the future and as you as you start the process as part of the consistency every sales that come in mm -hmm. even if it's one city mm -hmm. begin to build an investment plan for the business okay most people think that applying back so everything comes we spend as part of the safety net in financial planning make sure that at every income at every revenue the company generates every month. If it's one city, consistently over time, you put it there gradually, gradually. By the time you realize that has also built another form of funding, which is untouchable. We brought that culture into our business. So what we do is that any uh, extra fund we get, 
even how little we put in them, accumulate them, put in a, a treasury bill. Mm -hmm. It's for the company, but that money is untouchable. And a time came, we're able to generate enough to uh, uh, rely on that uh, T-bill to raise capital from the bank wow. to bring it back into the business. Okay. And it's still there. We pay back. That becomes like a hedge for us to be able to rely on in case of anything. This, If you're not disciplined, you can't do it. You need to be able to be disciplined and build that kind of safety net within. Because there are shocks that will come. Mm -hmm. So at the point the business is doing well, you make sure that you increase the rate at which you were, safe, you were investing for the business and investing in your behalf as well. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you brought, just brought in the individual bit. And, and you would, I'd like to say, with, with what we've talked about, mostly seems to apply to businesses. But how do individuals apply these principles, these financial principles, in their own lives? Oh, wow. That's, amazing. that's a really good question, right? So when you're thinking about the concept of consistency, discipline, savings, uh, investment, and reinvestment. So looking at yourself, what's the first thing you do when you get in the car? The first thing I do when I get into the car. I hope it's the right thing, but yes, I'm asking. Uh, apart from putting on my face in my seatbelt. Oh, <laughs> you did it. You said exactly. Why did you put on your seatbelt? Well, okay, apart from the fact that the, the noise will become ping, ping, ping. I kind of like the fact that when when if something should go amiss, yeah. I, I I am I am secure in my in my in my in my seat, and then I may not hit the the dashboard or something like that. You're protecting your asset. Yes, I am. You you Me. are the asset. Yeah, I am exactly. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that the value that they have. And what happens when you begin to look at yourself as something that's valuable? Okay. You're going to do the right things to protect it. So that can simply even mean, I mean, if we come down to the, just the basic levels, you're eating better, yeah. you're taking care of yourself, yeah. you're praying, you're doing something to protect yourself so that when you, those are all reinvestments into yourself, even if you choose to go out and get an education. So even if, let's say, you're not financially literate, you're going to be the type of person that says, I'm going to seek out the resources to help me better understand how to manage money because you're making that investment or reinvestment into yourself. You're protecting yourself. You're saving yourself, yeah. right? And you're remaining consistent and yeah. diligent to the process because you know at the end of the day, this is your most valuable asset and you want to see this duplicated in some way, shape or form. So that's kind of just where you look at it from the individual perspective. Fantastic, fantastic. So um, I, I, it just came to my mind that we hadn't talked anything about cost cutting or cost savings mm -hmm. in businesses. Yeah. But it is a very important aspect of ensuring that our businesses um, 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 thrive. Uh, very. So how, what, what, what about, what would you do, would you like to share with us about cost savings? Co cost saving is, is a great measure because if you're not cutting costs, mm -hmm. you're even making good revenue. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just like making hose and, uh, or using basket to fetch water. So you, you need to learn how to keep your overheads low mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, you can be able to... That, that, I, I went to a company, I, 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 my consulting, I do corporate restructuring. I went to a company, they had 450 staff. And I said, look, this is a big issue. And they have a huge wage bill. Mm -hmm. And the company was collapsing. Oh dear. So I was given the power by the board. I fired 200 people <laughs> uh, using proper... Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> cool. And all the branch managers were using four wheel SUVs. And this is a microfinance. Wow. So we sold, we took all the SUVs and bought a uh, Kia Picanto for each manager. Yeah. And sold all of that. And you can imagine how much we generated from selling SUV for 21, <laughs> 21 branches. Wow. 21 SUVs sold. You buy Picanto. And those are the cost measures we began to. Then we checked the ledger. Some people closed the office, leave air conditions on. So all these things is into the overheads of the company. So be meticulous when it comes to spending and be able to ensure that you can be able to seal the loopholes. Yeah. And it even affects us as a country. When there are a lot of leakages, mm -hmm. you make a lot of revenue, but it, 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 it goes out. Away. There are businesses who have come for funding. And after we went in as part of the training mm -hmm. and we examined their businesses, we realized there were too many leakages. So we brought in consultants to help them. When they see the leakage, they didn't even need money from us. Because they were generating enough revenue. Okay. So just check the leakages in your system. You give a car to driver. 
They can do a distribution that by 2 p.m. they are finished. But these guys will run around in town bending your fuel by 6 p.m. they are not reporting. Exactly, exactly. And these are all measures. So now people are beginning to put trackers in their cars. Yeah. It's a cost measure. You may it's, it's costing you to buy a tracker, but in the long run it will save you. Yes, yeah, it will help you. So we need to be able to look at all these measures. And people even reporting late at work. Mm -hmm. And when it's break, they go off and spend a lot of time. All these things are, are overheads to the company. So check and reduce the overheads. And it goes a long way to sustain the revenue that comes into the business. Check and review the overheads because it, go, it, it they help. Uh, okay, so I have uh, my lovely people on, online and they are sending us their messages. And um, um, Priscilla J, welcome as well as uh, um, Peace Ad Adaise. Peace Adaise. And... Um, Philonzi Queen, you say keep up the good work. Have you heard? They say keep up the good work. And um, Samuel Gariba, the person says that great work, my mentor. I wonder who it was. Is it? Is it um, <laughs> thank you. We all accept it. Yes. We all mentors. Yes. And then Opari Bernard has given us thumbs up because it means that our conversation is going very yeah. well. And uh, Malta says, uh, keep up the good work. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We will definitely keep up the good work. And then we also have um, Perpetual Campbell, who is saying that very resourceful discussion. By the way, if you have a question for them, please send us your question so that they can answer it while they are here. Because when they run away, we may not have the chance again. And Janet is asking, Janet Wintum is asking, is the grant today, um, <laughs> I think you best speak to, speak to yeah, us. Now, so the grant will be at the end of the, uh, of the six program, week program, six week program. So yeah. today so we is the third three, week, yes. we have three weeks more. So keep the, and last week someone called me and the person, I knew the person said, look, I'm going to always listen and make sure that I do all the assignments <laughs> and win. And I said, but you, your business, you are in the growth stage. 10,000, he said, even though it's more, it's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people want, yeah, so we, yeah. we want to see that people yeah. get involved in that. So at the end of the six weeks, definitely, because then you would have had all the, all the, all the information. Yeah. It will help you prepare your program, uh, your, your idea, and give it to us. Thank you, Janet, for that question, because I'm sure maybe somebody else was asking about, thinking about it as yeah. well. So, no, it's at the end of the six-week program which is in the, in the next Latin, the fourth week from today. And then uh, uh, Beneza in Kansa is watching live from the Volta region. Oh, wow. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you, Beneza, for sending us your information. And we, we, we definitely appreciate all of you who are watching with us today. Um, we, okay, thank you. Um, we went, went before I, 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 I brought in from, from our, um, oh, Promise says that, good evening. You watching us live from Ashaman, Ashaman, Lebanon. It's been a long time since you joined the, the Springboard Hangout. Yes, indeed. And you are back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Um, um, so, you know, one of the things that um, sometimes I wonder if it's possible, would you recommend a financial training course, some, some short course, for entrepreneurs, um, Jewel? Yes, hands down. Um, when I was in the United States, the organization that I worked with, we focused particularly on financial management. We had partnerships with the banks across the U.S. so that what would happen is that once the entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs not only got to understand about their business, but also their personal finances as well as what their business finances look like, then we help them restructure so that they can get access to funding from the banks. Because what was happening is that you find that a lot of people may have a decent business idea and then they go to the bank and of course they don't have anything together, well structured or put together, and they get denied for certain loans, credit facilities, or anything to actually support and grow their businesses. So without any of these types of programs or courses that exist, you find that entrepreneurs are often, again, waning in the wind because they're afraid. Okay. They're afraid of the numbers. That's all. Okay. Yes, they're they, afraid of them, but the numbers, they don't have to be afraid of the numbers, yeah. they, they? don't have to be afraid of the numbers at all, okay. because the numbers are your friend. Okay. <laughs> they're yeah, going to tell really, you the story. Are they really the friend? They're really your friend. They're, they're your most honest friend. They are? They're, they're your most are honest sure? friend. I'm sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. The numbers definitely are our friends, because yeah. then they let us see um, what, what we are doing, how well we are doing, or unfortunately, how badly we are doing. And if we are doing badly, how we can straighten up things to make it work. 
Because, I mean, if, if you have to prepare a budget where you, you show a, a loss mm -hmm. from, the, from the beginning of the, the year, then you have to really look at your business again yeah. and say, is it worth going exactly. on in this business? And if it's not, what can I do yeah. to ensure that I make it a profit? Yeah. And that's exactly what Franklin was speaking to, is that, that operational side of it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we may have multiple products that we're yeah. putting out, and then we're not realizing that is one product that's actually so reducing you know, the amount, reducing how much we're making, but then also the one that's actually making the money is our cash cow, yeah. and we're not investing as much time into that one, but we're treating them all the same. And then we're trying to figure out, well, why aren't we really making money? It's because we haven't taken the time to actually just pay attention numbers, to yeah. our actual numbers and the product lines that we have how do we make this better how do we enhance this that's critical. how do we make it better how do we enhance this I can tell you that definitely next week we will be looking at how we can make it better and how we can enhance it all too soon our time is up <laughs> oh, that was fast <laughs> <laughs> indeed that was fast so frankly, your closing comment yeah, so, before uh, you go. It's important for our side. You can get money from any IP without taking the financial education. Okay. So it's it's one of the components of it, and we give you basic bookkeeping that you don't need to be an accountant to know. Mm. And now we have a software. I will not mention the name of the software because mm -hmm. they are not advertising on this program. <laughs> we hope they will come and advertise here. Yes. But we have a software that we are, we give to all our beneficiaries. You, you can it's on your phone. So you don't even forget to do the entries. Okay. So you can just enter the basic information. You bought this. You need to do this. This cash came in. You just enter. At the end of the month, it gives you your profit and loss statements, your balance sheet, and all that nicely done on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop. So these are there. So let's be disciplined and start keeping the books. That will open doors someday for you. You will. <laughs> yes. The key to your success is found in your finances, your financial planning, your financial literacy, and your financial understanding. These are the things that are going to unlock success for you. So if your numbers aren't together, um, what you're going to find is that your business will soon come to an end. And then when that happens, of course, we're recognizing that there's much more to be done and we need to make sure that financially we're growing successfully. Thank you, thank you so much, Joel. That was that was um, an amazing one. And um, as we bring the business, I said business. As we bring this program to a close, I would like to say that please watch out for Albert on session three of uh, the Springboard Hangouts, where we'll be talking about uh, we'll be talking with actually Israel Lai uh, on the behind in the engine room. You can't afford to miss that one. Is going to be a, a really, really interesting one. Following that, um, um, Joel, thank you for being with us. And then, frankly, thank you for, for also being with us. I would like to say thank you to Reverend Albert for supporting us. I would also like to um, say the production team, um, Isaac um, and... Um, <laughs> Isaac, as well as um, all the, the fantastic people behind the team, this has been a phenomenal program as usual. Thank you and God richly bless you. I'm out. So long we've been here, we've been trying to break free, chains that hurt us in our minds, but no more, this is a turning point, no more searching, searching. the light has, the light has come. come. Turn around, no more time to move on. Time to move on. Here's how we turn around. Where we are, where we go, wrong decisions, wrong direction. Time to make, make the right changes. Whoa, come on, Africa. This is the turning point. No more searching.
Time to hear the one voice. 